So hi, my name is Jenny. So please state your full name and the office you're running for. Hi Jenny, my name is Art Barajas and I am running for Montebello City Council. Okay. Do you live in Montebello? If so, how long have you been a resident? I have lived in Montebello. Yes, I do live in Montebello and I have lived here from the moment my parents brought me home from the hospital for 45 years. I've been a resident. Okay. What is your current occupation? My current occupation, I'm a business owner. I do screen printing and heat, and heat press. Do you feel your occupation and personal life will allow you sufficient time to dedicate to the office of city council? Sure. Actually, I'm an incumbent, so for the last two years, I've been able to manage and work on uh, work with my business and uh, obviously being in the seat. Uh, I have a very supportive family, so when it comes to kid issues or anything like that, uh, I certainly work around it, but definitely make time for, for everything. Okay. Um, have you been involved in any community work, such as clubs, organizations, events, or volunteer service? Yes, I've been around. Uh, uh, I've been a longtime member of the Montebello Alliance Club, which is a service club. I've been with them since 2000. I'm still currently a member, so for 18 years. As a matter of fact, on the 25th, uh, it'll be my 18th anniversary as a Montebello Lion. Uh, and I'm also a member of the Montebello Sister City uh, uh, Ashia Association, which we uh, give out scholarships and we send kids to go to Japan so they can get the lifetime experience of, you know, student exchange program. And they send a student here. And I've done several community events in the in the city as well through my years of being involved. Um, you kind of answered it. Um, how long have you been dedicating your time to these services? So I'm just going to go ahead and skip around to question five. Sure. Do you generally spend time patronizing businesses or visiting public spaces in Montebello? Of course, that's actually my priority. I usually, for the most part, you'll find me uh, patronizing here in Montebello. For example, I, uh, if there's anything that I could purchase at the mall, I would purchase it there. Uh, at Sears and obviously we've got the bad news today about them finally chapter 11 uh, Petco that's where I take you know I have pets I have a rabbit and I have two dogs and and a turtle so we purchase all our stuff there as far as eateries I'm constantly patronizing all the restaurants here my favorite uh, well one of my favorites is uh, you know uh, Krabby's restaurant I go to BJ's a lot uh, we enjoy eating at Little Mexico Mr. M's so we definitely patronize you know uh, Alondra Hot Wings and uh, so yeah so we definitely patronize all the restaurants here in the city what motivates you to want to dedicate your time and energy to serve, guide, and protect the residents of Montebello? You know, uh, for me, it's 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 a uh, it's a personal thing. My whole family lives in Montebello from the day they came here. They're, they're Mexican immigrants, and my father was able to rent an apartment here when he first landed in this country. Was able to buy a home here in Montebello and raise his family. Uh, my brother, my sisters, and I we all live in Montebello. Have our homes here. Uh, we have several cousins, so it's. Uh, you know, I just, uh, this is the city that I grew up in, you know, and, and I love it. And I don't know any better than Montebello. What are the main goals you would like to accomplish as a city council member? As a council member, my main goal is to uh, hopefully work with a cohesive city council that will leave our personal differences aside. And when we come get to the dais, that we can actually do what we all feel will be best for the city. Uh, another thing that I really would like to do is to definitely put the city back on our financial track and, uh, and attract more businesses. You know, we've been working really hard in the last eight years, particularly the last four years, from bringing different bus businesses and and to open up the um, uh, the housing market in the city of Montebello. So definitely one of my first priorities is to put the city of Montebello back on the financial track. Good. What skills, attributes, or resources do you possess that will allow you to accomplish these goals? I think for me, it's uh, being a, a private business, a small business owner, uh, a lot of it has uh, to do with the way uh, I look at the numbers. And the way I look at math, I'm always trying to figure out what's a good way for the city to bring in revenue, just like I would with my business. Uh, certainly try to invest in certain uh, projects that we have had in the city that are going to be long-term investments for the city as well, that are going to be bringing tax revenue to the community. Uh, so I think that I bring those attributes. Uh, you know, I, I, I run, when I sit on the day, so I, I look at it like if it's my business. Certainly I do that. What do you feel is reasonable? What do you feel is a reasonable timeline for you to accomplish your goals? Well, uh, at first when I kind of liked it, I thought it was going to be four years, and then I said it's still a lot to be done. Uh, we gained some weight the last four years, and I think uh, for for me, I personally would like to see another four years that some unfinished projects that I'd like to, like to see get done in the city. Okay. Montebello has suffered through several years of financial hardship. What specific steps would you take to put our city into a firmer financial footing? Well, when I first got into the city council in 2009, Montebello was already in a financial hardship. And one of the things that we've tried doing, particularly this last term, this last four years, was looking at different things that we can do to bring in revenue into the community. One of which was 
uh, trying to sell our water company, which we put into a vote of the people, which it failed, and we have to respect what the community wants. But uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to sell it, which would have been something that I would have liked to have seen done, was because I wanted to sell the, the infrastructure of the water company. You know, we have leaky pipes, we have uh, an, an old wells that just need tremendous amount of repair. I think it leaves up in the upwards of $7 million. And we're constantly losing money, basically uh, duct taping and putting Band-Aid uh, on that uh, because the, we haven't redone or, or repaired a complete overhaul of that water company since 1973. So mm -hmm. since then till now, it's been nothing but repair, 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 and a lot of the parts are no longer made. So those are the kinds of things that are constantly costing the community anywhere mm -hmm. from three to five hundred thousand dollars a year. So if we sell by, by I mean by infrastructure, we sell like the piping and the water well and all that stuff. Uh, you know, we we can you know make money out of the, the sale of that. But we keep the water rights. We still own the water. So whoever buys it still has to buy the water from the city of Montebello. So it's a win-win for us, right? We don't lose our water rights because now it's becoming liquid gold, especially with all the drought and everything. But you get to sell, you know, the infrastructure basically that's falling apart and sell it to a company that's in the business of selling water. The city of Montebello probably at one point saw it profitable when they first bought it. But right now it's just been costing the city a lot of money for years. Uh, another thing that I tried to do uh, my last term, and I know it's not a popular thing, but this is when I have to decide do I become a responsible councilman or a, a politician that uh, making decisions that are not going to be popular? And another thing, the thing that we wanted to do was the uh, Measure S, which was the, the sales tax. Uh, and the reason I, I, I didn't have a problem trying to bring that to the community to vote on it is because most of the community already purchases goods uh, in Pico Rivera, whether it's at the Target or at the Walmart, and they have a, one of the highest sales taxes in, in the country. And uh, so we go and we spend the money over there, and I thought, well, if people go ahead and pay the extra sales tax in Pico Rivera, why don't they come and do it here? Uh, but again, we have to respect the, the voice of the people, and they voted it down, and they said no. Uh, now we're looking into a, a different thing that, uh, you know, it seems to be taboo, but it's, it's legal in the state of California. We're talking about the legalization of cannabis, and we're trying to uh, bring it in with some implementations and restrictions that will be safe for the community and also try to make some money off of that. But I would also like to see a lot more development, more so in the, in the commercial. We have some great opportunities that are coming up with our city. A lot of people say, oh, what are we going to do because the Costco left? And to me, I see a, a huge potential of what we can do there. It's along the 60 freeway. It's a very popular site. I mean, the Costco there, certainly all those people that were there, if you were there at any given weekend, certainly didn't have a problem finding it. So I think instead of crying about why Costco left, we should look at the opportunities that we have with that. You know, we can bring in so many businesses that would like to come in, whether it's retail or restaurants or, you know, for example, I'm just some of the things I would like to see there if I'm able to bring them in. Uh, and, and of course, anything on the council, not one man can do it. You need, mm -hmm. you know, the vote of at least two other people is majority rules, right? Uh, and uh, I would like to bring in like a Buffalo Wild Wings or Dick Sporting Goods. Some of the things that you have to go to other si other cities like Cerritos or Long Beach to see, you know, why not have it in Montebello along home. the 60 freeway? Yeah, close to home. And so those are the things that I would like to see now that the Sears, unfortunately, is leaving. I think for a lot of us growing up, you know, we grew up going to the Sears. As a matter of fact, when I was in high school, we played for the grand opening. I played with the Montebello High School Marching Band, and we were the band that played for the grand opening. So mm -hmm. when I heard the news today, I kind of went back to the day when we played, and I was talking to some of my band buddies. Yeah, they were kind of posting it now, you know, with social media. They, somebody posted it on Facebook, and we were all discussing how we remember, you know, and it was a really neat event. Mm -hmm. But again, as much... Uh, as much as we hate to see Sears leave, the opportunity to bring something in there, again, you know, who knows? It could be a target. It could be, I mean, you name it. You know, we just have to market it. And another thing, too, that uh, I would like to explain is that the city can try to bring in all these businesses, but at the end of the day, it comes down to two things. Whether the retailer wants to come into that location and whether the, the property owner wants to bring them in and are able to negotiate a lease. You know, but we certainly like to bring in a lot of things here into the city of Montebello. And, those two things are two things that projects that I would like to see you forth where we can definitely bring in uh, something that this community really needs and that we're constantly asking, why don't we have this? Why don't we have that? First, we don't have the real estate, but now that it's coming up, why not take advantage of it? And those are the types of things that I want to see that can bring revenues into the community. Many neighboring cities have had an increase in new small businesses that provide creative products and services. It's been said that the city's regulations have discouraged small businesses from starting up in Montebello and have inhibited their survival. Do you agree with this statement? If no, why do you feel these type of businesses seem to be lacking in Montebello? If yes, what could the city council change to attract these type of businesses? Well, there's a lot of different answers to that question. I think the first one in, in the city is that yes, one of the frustrations in myself even being a business owner is that I can see that the lack of staff at City Hall. Constantly because of the financial crisis that the city is, 
you know, we don't have the staff that can move the permits right along or, or, or to do the inspections that the fire department used to do in order for them to open their business. I recently had a business change to my to my business. We were under JT's designs because I had a business partner, but I had to change it to AB and Sons, uh, silk screening and embroidery. And just to go through that process, it took, you know, over a month. Uh, you just imagine a new business trying to come in and you have to have the fire department and do this. But again, I, I also know it's because it's a, it's like a personnel that's at City Hall that's able to oversee these things. And this is why I have been constantly trying to bring in revenue to the city, whether it be through the sale of the water company or increase the sales tax. And now, which was the last option I wanted to take a look at, but, uh, you know, through the, the, the cannabis. But we have had some other things that we've approved that through the years you're going to see money coming in and we're going to be able to now hire more personnel in City Hall. For example, we built those um, those townhomes on the Olympic in Greenwood. It was just an empty lot that the city had there. It was just old buses and police cars and stuff like that. So we were able to sell it for a little over $2 million. But the plus on that, again, looking at it as an investment, you know, a lot of people can say it was a one-time sale. But at the end of the day, you got to remember, those people are going to be paying property taxes. And not only that, those people, when they register their vehicles, a lot of those license plate fee taxes are going to be coming to the city of Montebello. And not only that, you also bring people they're going to be purchasing in Montebello. You know, Greenwood to me is the main artery, right? Because, you know, my kids go to school uh, at Montebello High School. So when I'm driving, and just yesterday when I was picking up my kid, I noticed that I saw people that live in, the, in that development and they were coming with superior bags, right? So, you know, because they got to go to the market and they got to buy things and they got to do certain things. So the bottom line is they're spending money here in the city. So threefold, you see that's, that's, that's a potential revenue that the city is going to bring. Now, are you going to see all those millions or, or all that money that's coming in within a year? Well, no, because I mean, those, that development just finished. But, um, but you know, that kind of money is going to be coming in. It's going to give us more resources to attract more businesses that want to come in. We also just approved, I want to say, two, three months ago, a development on Woody Boulevard, which is going to be container restaurants. You know, we're thinking outside of the box. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with them. They have one in in, in Long Beach, and what it is is these, these containers, like you will see where the trains, and they put specialized restaurants in it. You know, like uh, fusion type foods and everything. And they're gonna and they're gonna be there, and they're gonna have like a courtyard, and they're gonna be able to you know buy drinks, and you know there, there's talk of maybe having like beer and wine, so that people can enjoy the types of foods that they're gonna be having there. So by doing that, I'm hoping that can be a cornerstone that can revitalize Woodo Boulevard and entice other businesses that want to come in, and maybe some of these business owners will like to, you know, want to sell their property, and if not, maybe at least to these types of businesses that are gonna be like that, that are gonna be bringing in different types of things for the new generation, myself included. The homeless concern is a big and complicated issue for many cities. What steps do you feel the city council should take to reduce homelessness and increase the safety of our residents? Well, uh, you know, I have a lot of compassion for the homeless people because uh, until then, uh, uh, to uh, you know, not too long ago, we started seeing more and more uh, homeless people because uh, being, uh, being homeless, uh, it's, it's not illegal, right? I mean, they're not breaking a law by being homeless. Uh, or, or unfortunately, when they try to find shelter and stuff like that, you know, they break the law because, you know, they, they get into private properties and they, they're just trying to find shelter. Um, I think one of the things that we need to do, I think, for a lot of these and talking to our police department, a lot of it has to do with mental issues. You know, people, we, we, we give them the resources, you know, where to go to, whether it be a homeless shelter. Or what, and sometimes they just don't want the help, you know, and, and that's the frustrating part. So I think it has to start with us looking at it, uh, what some people... With some people, it's a matter of them just helping them get back up on their feet and they move on. But I want to say possibly the majority, it's probably because there's some sort of type of mental illness, you know. And unfortunately, they just can't be locked up in jail all the time and they just can't be in a clinic. So we need to come up with programs or subsidized programs that are going to be able to help them to move on in life and, and, and get away from that lifestyle. A revolution in public transportation has been occurring all over L.A. County. Whether it's implementing bike lanes, using rideshare services, or the introduction of new devices such as bird scooters, what is your stance on allowing electric scooters to operate in Montebello? My stance is uh, I understand it's illegal to drive them on the uh, on sidewalks, but uh, uh, for example, we're taking different uh, approaches now. We're going to be re uh, repaving uh, Whittier Bo I mean uh, Montebello Boulevard, which is going to include bike lanes, and I would definitely encourage anybody with electric scooters to use those bike lanes, uh, so you can use that and you know try to be as close to the curb as you can and be safe. I understand those things can go up to 25 miles an hour. Um, you know, so, you know, it, it's, it's basically a moving vehicle. But uh, I think by adding more, uh, you know, by, by doing a study and adding more, um, and adding more bike lanes, I think that, that'll be the way to, you know, be using it. But I'm, I'm for it. And, and, and I'm for bike riding, and I'm definitely for, uh, you know, scooter.
Um, you mentioned bike lanes. Can you speak a little bit more about that? Yeah, so we went and we, we got a grant from the state of California and uh, we're going to be able to redo basically most of uh, Montebello Boulevard, who's in you know desperate need of repair. And one of the things that we're going to be implementing on that once they redo the street is we're going to go ahead and add bike lanes. And also, I, while we spend, uh, there, we used to have the Montebello Bicycle Coalition where we were trying to get the Measure R or Prop C, uh, I mean, uh, Prop C or Measure R funds so that we can do a study to see what streets are feasible where we're able to bring in bike lanes into the city of Montebello. We see more and more bike riders in the community now than we've ever had. Even if you look at public transportation or buses, there's times if you look at it in the morning or when people are coming home from work, you know, they have up to four or five bikes, uh, you know, on, on, the, on, on the bus, you know, people want to ride it. So I think one of the things that we should do is definitely study, look at some streets that are wide enough where we can be bicycle friendly. The Montebello City Council voted on several marijuana issues that allow for businesses to businesses distribution and delivery on retailers in the city, as well as allowing commercial indoor cultivation, manufacturing, and the testing of marijuana. A large part of South of Montebello's industrial and commercial property where these companies will most likely manufacture goods for far from the public's property. Do you believe the current regulations are what is best for our city? As of right now, yes. Right now, we're barely going through the application process. Uh, where exactly where all these businesses are going to go? I mean, we don't know exactly who has running what location or what, but certainly we put it in the industrial area of the community. Um, I think people are, com uh, are, are, are confusing the accessibility of these products uh, as opposed to, you know, the type of business that is coming in. We are not allowing, and I made it very clear, because I live on the south side and I raised a family, my business is in the south side. So I made it very clear that I definitely do not want any storefront or, or dispensaries uh, because they attract a certain element. Uh, however, by when you do an unmarked building uh, that's gonna be doing cultivation or manufacturing, some people may not even know it's there. Um, I think uh, when implementing some regulations, uh, you know, that uh, there's definitely gonna be safe for the community. So, um, I, I, um, you know, so the, the part of the delivery and accessibility you know, anybody right now, there's current companies in surrounding cities that allow uh, uh, cannabis, uh, including the, 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 some of the cities that include dispensaries. They're already delivering into our city. Uh, as a matter of fact, the City of Commerce just approved it, I believe, about three weeks ago to a month ago. I understand, uh, I know this, I don't want to say any names, but from what I understand, uh, there's a neighboring city that's probably going to start approving and looking into this matter themselves at the beginning of the year. And uh, so the fact that the deliveries are going to get done in Montebello, they're, they're getting done already. So why not, again, try to bring in some tax revenue and be able to enforce it, you know, uh, as opposed to continue to be the legal operations that are going out there right now. The bottom line is right now, whether we like it or not, uh, you know, the deliveries uh, from retail stores are getting delivered to the city. It's, there's some, it's basically an Amazon, you know, and you get it delivered to the city regardless. So why not try and make the tax revenue off of that? Being that these mar marijuana... Being that these marijuana topics are so controversial, do you feel it is best for the city council to make the final decision on these matters, or do you give the vote to the people of Montebello? Well, the the vote of the people came secondary. Um, you know, we when when we started looking into this issue, um, it was something that the city council voted on, and uh, it was so it wasn't really until after when people started saying, you know, we should leave it up to a vote of the people. Now I understand there's a referendum going around right now that people want when I collect signatures, and again. I've never, I've never argued with the community. If that's what they want, then that's what we will follow. But right now, the city council gets to vote on it, and because of things that I already said earlier and reasons that I gave earlier as far as uh, bringing in tax revenue for the city, that's why I voted for it. Many followers of the page Everything In and Around Montebello have questioned why Montebello is not a lucrative, attractive, safe, or have diverse business as its neighboring cities. Do you feel residents that are more informed, involved, and have a sense of the city unity have a greater chance of guiding their city to a prosperous future? Yeah, certainly we like to hear from the community on everything, how they feel, and certainly Montebello is not shy, especially on, on, on social media. <laughs> but I, I think a lot of things that they see in other cities, a lot of these cities started making or started implementing revenues from the 80s. And I'll give a perfect example. Um, you know, I never look at my neighbor's grass because it's greener, but just I'm using it as an example. Uh, we're looking at Pico Rivera, you know, when it first became a city, they saw that the cost of having their own police and fire was going to be too expensive. So they started, you know, um, basically they went county. So they don't have that expense that we have. I certainly don't want to go county with, with our police and fire. I enjoy what we have. But we also have to have the revenues to be able to afford our very own police and fire, right? So in the 80s, um, you know, uh, Pico Rivera also implemented what they call a utility tax. 
So they have that. In the early 2000s, they implemented their sales tax. You know, so they have all these things that they've been planning for through the, through the years, where even me, within the last eight years, I mean, we, there's no way we would have been able to do those. I mean, I tried to do at least a few of them the last four years, but the community said no. So now we have to start looking at different types of revenue. And I think that's why other cities are thriving more than us, because I see that their forefathers on the city councils that they had before, they projected for things that would happen in the future. And I think they're, 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 they're able to cash and capitalize and things like that. For example, the city of commerce, we're mostly industry. They got the casino, they got the outlets. We don't have that luxury. You know, we still think that, oh, because we pay our property taxes and we have a mall, that that's where most of our tax revenue is going to come from. So I, we're not in a situation here now, unfortunately, in Montebello, where we can just say uh, our, our, our taxes are enough. But we want to definitely try and, 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 uh, and attract new businesses so that we can attract those businesses and, of course, help increase the tax revenue in the community. How do you improve the access to relevant and important city information to residents? You know, I think uh, there's, a, there's a variation of various different things that we can do on that. For example, social media. We try to reach out to the community also by putting on the Montebello Spotlight, which is the chamber newsletter that comes out once a month. We try to give as much as information there. There's also another newspaper that comes out in the city uh, with, um, you know, the Montebello Reporter, and we try to put information there. But, you know, we're in different times now. People don't necessarily, you know, read those newspapers anymore. You know, it's all about social media or on your cell phone. And I would like to see implemented, at least at City Hall, for any resident that's interested, that uh, we should have some sort of an app. And I know some cities have it where you can get information about the city or where you need to go mm -hmm. and, and things like that. Uh, I think right now, one of the things that we really need to do, we need to revamp. But again, because of lack of staff, we really need to revamp our website because it's really easy, right? You can get on your phone or you can get on your computer. Most of us are behind either one of those throughout the day. And any information that you need regarding the city should be easily accessible to you like that. And I think those are some of the things that we're trying to change in, in, in the city of Montebello. But I think that's probably, to me, that's the most important thing. You, you, we we got to get to social media and, uh, and move, with, you know, basically move with the age of the electronic age. Yeah. What can be done to get residents more involved in the city decision-making process, such as voting and attending city council meetings? Well, um... As far as voting, it's always been very frustrating, you know, to see the very low numbers that come out. I think people are discouraged, but uh, and people feel like their, their vote doesn't count, and every single vote counts. Um, uh, as a council member, uh, there's times where there's a council meeting, and and God bless them again. I respect whether we agree or disagree on on, on different issues. There's always a core of people that go, but it's always the same five or six people. There's times where maybe one or two people just show up to a council meeting. You know, it's an election year, so we've had a lot more audience than that this, this last couple of years. But for the most part, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, we really need to get the word out there. I mean, certainly by going to our website, you know when our council meetings are, what times they are. Uh, we try to, we broadcast it every time through the government channel that we have through um, through Charter Communications, which is also spread Spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, so that's some of the things that we try to reach out to the community. But again, I think it comes back to getting really involved in, 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 in social media and basically getting back into you know, the, the, I don't know what is the proper way to say the uh, electric wave or, you know, however you want to call technology, it. The technology. Technology. Yeah, sure. The, you know, technology uh, mm -hmm. that we can, uh, that we can definitely get the word out because again, uh, it is so easy for somebody to get a text or receive an email or just mm -hmm. look up an app and have that information there. But to try and encourage people, I think that's more of a personal thing. We can certainly advise everybody. I don't think anybody Right now, with everybody campaigning with as many candidates as you have on the school board and even on the city of Montebello for, for city council, um, I think the, the message is out there that the election is November 6th. So, you know, we hope that we have a good turnout. You know, every election, everybody knows when election day is. So whether or not people go out there, anything short of just literally going to their home and dragging them out to get out to vote. And if they've made it so easy now, too. You don't literally have to go to the polls anymore. You know, you could do the vote by mail, you know, an absentee ballot, you know. So there's just so many ways. And. And people know, you know, because there's so many absentee ballots out there. But uh, it's just, I think, uh, people just really need to, to get out there and vote and their, have their opinions be heard. What efforts could you make to gather the diverse populations of Montebello to share community experiences? Opportunities for strangers and neighbors to get to know each other and other to create large bonds of community. You know, growing up in Montebello as a kid, I remember having a really good time. Um, I brought the Montebello Parade back when I was mayor back in 2013. You know, that was, I think that's one of the things that brings the community together. When you bring a parade, you bring different bands. You bring like a Rancho High School, you bring Bell Gardens High School band, and some bands can even come from Long Beach. Well, those 
people bring, or those students bring their parents along with them. And they're all going to want to come and see their kids perform. And they're going to want to buy and eat uh, whatever it is that's on Whittier Boulevard or any restaurant for, for that matter. If they want to catch the freeway to go back home, they can stop at the BJ's or at the Applebee's or any of those restaurants that are up there. But you certainly, when you put events like that together, not only do you do you bring business to the community, but you also bring a diverse crowd and you get the, it's a sense of community. You know, the summer concerts, you know, the same thing. You know, I, I, I've tried every year that I've been on the city council to get the donations uh, as much as I can so that we can go ahead and have city summer concerts. Because when you, you go to the summer concerts, I mean, the community absolutely loves them. And as a kid, I remember the 4th of July fireworks show. But how do I justify spending, I don't know, you hear different numbers of how much a fireworks show costs. But, you know, but, you know, you, you, you know, <laughs> do, we, do you do that or you repair a street or do you yeah. hire another police officer? Um, you know, but those are the types of things that the community really enjoys and they want to bring back, you know. So uh, I would like to see a lot more of that go on. But I think the first things first, I think we need to really just put our heads together and start bringing in revenue into the city. Once we have some, right now we have two of them already, right? We already have our parade back, which is going to be next week, by the way, October 20th. And then we also have, you know, the summer concerts that happen every summer. We have anywhere from six to eight concerts, depending on how much money we're able to raise for the summer concerts. And I think that's what brings a sense of community to the community. I mean, it's, it's just really nice to see the community get together. Uh, for example, this Saturday, you're going to see all the service clubs are going to be there. You know, the community is going to come out strong. And in the two high school bands, and, and really that's what we brought back the parade because we had both Shore and Montebello High School that uh, that wanted their, 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 band, their parade back. We're like, you know, we work so hard all year. We perform everywhere else, but we don't get to showcase our talents in front of our very own community and our friends and family. So certainly I was all for it, you know. So we, we brought it back. And uh, so those are the types of things that I think that bring the community together. You know, and I think a lot of times, too, also social media can be a little vicious. You know, I think a lot of people get discouraged from what they read. But, again, everybody's entitled to their opinion. But at the end of the day, you know, it's what you make of it. You know, but certainly can't say we haven't tried to do, bring some of those things back. Okay. That concludes our questions. Is there anything else you would like to share? Well, I just uh, certainly would like just to let everybody know that it's been a pleasure and very humbling experience to be a councilman for the last eight years. I uh, hope to come back for another four because there's a lot of things that I would like to see get done in our community. But first and foremost, I just want to thank everybody for the opportunity and entrusting me for being your councilman for the last eight years. Thank you.